2020, with the pandemic going on, I decided to check in on some motor bloggers. Welcome to It was just I had to part ways with that because to get the shots you want, you kind of sometimes have to bend the rules. And uh, my job's more important to me than my channel. <laughs> um, so I, I guess I, I have a, a question for everyone. Also, um, it, it seems like you know, depending on where you are, the, the conditions of the pandemic are, are getting better. And I don't know how much it affected you guys in terms of how you can go out and ride or what kind of uh, motor vlogs you wanted to do, but you guys have any big plans of what to do once the pandemic is over? I had so many plans, <laughs> um, but I don't know if any of them are going to be doable this year. Even my traditional going up to the motorcycle show with my best mate and getting a hotel and eating steak and getting drunk, that's out the window. Um, I've no idea what's going to happen this year, but I mean, like we mentioned earlier, I like the castle visits and historic stuff. Um, the English heritage have opened the doors on a lot of their sites now and are opening more and more as days go by. But instead of just allowing you to go there because you're a member and walk around, you've now got to book a, an appointment, which is good. As, a, as And for me, actually, I think that's going to be brilliant because they're not going to be crowds of people at these really important places. So I'm actually going to be able to get good footage. So I'm actually hoping to make the most of this pandemic and actually use it to be able to see these beautiful places with less crowds. But being, I'm currently working, I was furloughed. Um, so uh, April and May, I wasn't allowed to go to work. Um, June, they got me in for, which is what we're at the moment. And then July, I'm not going in. So I'm hoping in July to blitz as many places as I'm able to um just to get a backlog of footage that i can then put together over time um i don't know whether it's going to be possible or not but i really want to go and see some castles i, I like castles <laughs> <laughs> what about you stephen well um, you got it what, what's what's going on in your part um as far as people uh behaving uh appropriately with the pandemic and do you have plans for afterwards yeah, I'd say uh, overall, people have been pretty good about uh, sort of wearing their masks and not socializing as much, but it's a very outdoors culture here. So uh, all the mountains that I go to and all the uh, kind of creeks that run through it are very active still. And uh, there's like rafting going on and all sorts of activities there. So it's still very... Uh, Heavy with that stuff, a lot of hiking, right? I mean, some of the recommendation is you can go outdoors, you know, to keep your sanity. Just don't go into bars and stuff anymore. Uh, so it's actually probably more active uh, in some of the parks and outdoors. Uh, fortunately, our numbers aren't spiking like it is in Phoenix or Texas or uh, Florida. I think it's the other one that's spiking right now. Um, but for me, what's interesting is, you know, it has been it has been pretty empty. So my location-based travel has benefited from that to a degree, but also been hurt by that. So uh, what I mean is like, I went to one of the towns in the mountains that's known to have casinos and is booming with all this tourism and it's just dead, right? There's nothing there. So that content's kind of interesting because it's the only time ever, right? You can capture a, a dead city during the daytime like that. But uh, some of my goals would be to go back through some of these places kind of as a comparison once things open up fully, which I still think is months out or even next year. Um, and then speaking of the conversation at the moment, I had some ideas to travel outside of Colorado, but with kind of everything being uneasy and not all places being open, I really don't want to be, you know, eight hours from where I live trying to find uh, Airbnbs and find places to eat and stuff because I just don't think it's as reliable uh, yet. So I'm going to wait before I do any longer term travel um, as a result. But I mean, you're, not to get back. you're not going to Sturgis. You're not going to Sturgis. You're not going to ride up to Sturgis. I mean, everybody's planning for Sturgis. 
Sturgis. Oh, like Sturgis, Sturgis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah, yeah. What is Sturgis? I, I hear about it all the time, but I don't know what um, it is. Well, in the Bible, it was called Sodom and Gomorrah, and then <laughs> they changed the name when they moved it out to uh, the Dakotas. They called it Sturgis. It was too long of a name, so they just yeah. cut it down. But, but uh, yeah, um, story. <laughs> but yeah, it for me, it in the southeast and in, in my part of the southeast in the Nashville area, it seems like people are acting like um, I think CNN called it. Uh, caution fatigue, you know, where they're just kind of burned out of taking the precautions. They're throwing caution to the wind now. Um, and, and it's ridiculous. Um, I got a video coming out where I go and buy a used 360. And it was really interesting because while at where the uh, sale was taking place, it was at a police department that had e-commerce set up um, in their parking lot. I watched a police officer interact with somebody. Neither of them were wearing a mask. Saw some other people make transactions, not wearing a mask. And then the person I was buying from, I had my mask ready. And when they pulled up and they saw me with my mask, they reached in and got their mask. And um, I think they worked with uh, uh, disadvantaged or disabled children. And they, they, you know, explained that they had to take precautions because they didn't want to catch it and pass it to their people, you know, their people they interact with. So, you know, as far as what to do during the pandemic, you know, I'm trying to maintain distance. And there's some curvy rides I can go do by myself, which isn't a big deal, but I'm really looking forward to after this is over with, because I'm yearning to do another ride out West. Um, for some reason, I just love going out that direction on the bike. It's a whole different atmosphere. But uh, what about you, Lowell? How are, you know, as far as you were talking about earlier, your wife was going to go out to eat and they didn't have to use precautions. Right. Um, I kind of got the um, feeling you weren't too 100% behind doing that yet. Well, it's it's like New Jersey's been hit pretty bad, and I think we're up to about 12,000 deaths in the state. Um, and like I think New Jersey is maybe second under California in terms of like people per square mile. So there's a lot of people packed in there. So that's that that kind of explains why it's been hit here so so badly. Um, yeah, I I. You know, every year I go to a, a, a film festival in Ottawa, Canada, and this year I wanted to, to ride up, but they've, they've canceled the film festival. So that's that's off the uh, the table. But um, last summer I went, I I rode up from my where I live here to um, Nova Scotia, to the to the Cabot Trail. And uh, I've had all the footage, you know, in my, my <laughs> collection of hard drives for, you know, nearly a year. And so that's, you know, since I can't really go out and ride as much, that's my big project is to finally go back and start making those um, those videos for that because I, you know, that was um, about a, a six day adventure. And um, so I had a couple stops in different places and, and shot a lot of footage. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting to do that. Um, but I, I kind of, I guess I've just sort of decided that I'm gonna write this year off and just maybe wait until you know 2021. Hopefully, this pandemic will be over, and you know, once the winter is past and and riding conditions are better, start thinking of what I'm going to do then. Um, it's 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 still pretty crazy, and um, you know, even though I might be teaching in the fall, it still sounds like I might be doing it online or what they're calling hybrid, which is you can go into your class, but you got to practice social distancing and I don't know how to do that. I mean, I don't know how to teach kids someone. Are, kids are gonna struggle with that as well, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's um, and you know, no one's really done this before. So no one can say, oh, let's consult this book. You know, there's, there's no book, this is just try as we go along. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I like to think I'm an optimist. I, I'm, I wanna be very, very hopeful, but it's, it's, Frustrating, you know, like Anthony said that, you know, people aren't wearing masks or I'm seeing people who wear a mask, but they, they wear it below their nose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it drives me crazy because, you know, I can see someone in the store and they're a customer. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But when you see someone who works there and they're doing it, you know, and if you go to a grocery store and they're, they're stocking the shelves, but their mask is below their nose, they're like, okay, you're just spreading the germs to all the stuff. I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating. But you know what gets me? Uh, what gets me is 
like in Tennessee, there was there's a push. I think we're at phase. I think we're maybe at phase two for Nashville, you know, and the governor's pushing to open things up. But all the government service employees for the state are still work from home. And it's almost like, OK, wait a minute, if you truly believe it's good to go, then wouldn't you be leading the way as opposed to, oh, yeah, everybody else, go ahead and go do your commerce. Meanwhile, we got to keep the critical infrastructure protected by isolating them from each other. Um, it's it, it's kind of like we don't get the full picture. Uh, I'm not going to try to be a conspiracy theorist, but it's almost like, you know, wait a minute. Why should I do as you say when you're doing something opposite? And, and it's just mind boggling. Yeah. I think it's quite interesting to see how businesses will move forward from this because it's allowing them to realize how many people can work from home mm -hmm. and uh, how little people they can cope with in their offices and stuff like that. Um, I, it wouldn't surprise me if companies will pay people off and not really hire afterwards because they go, no, we, we, we can cope. We, we cope before, we can cope now. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think uh, a lot of people's jobs are going to have a, a change in description by the uh, end of next year. Yeah, it's like, you know, like with the motorcycle dealerships, you know, you have to set up appointments to go in and look at a bike and, and all that. Well, a lot of sales for dealerships is uh, spur in the moment sales. You know, you sure you went in to look at a bike, but you ended up buying a trinket or whatever. Well, if you're having to set up a appointment to look at a bike, then you may not even go through you know, that's just too much work i just won't even bother going i wanted to have a look at the ktm 790 adventure um just to see if it was a bike that fitted me and stuff and as it turns out it's not i can't even get on the bloody thing it's like a it's like an elephant <laughs> um, get, my daughter got some uh doc martens with like a two inch shoes that would help yeah yeah you <laughs> need to get those on them as well yeah. so <laughs> um, did but, you have to set up an appointment yeah, so I had to make an appointment for it, um, and it meant that when I was in there, I got the undivided attention from the sales guy, rather than when you pitch up without an appointment, sometimes you could be standing there for 10, 15, 20 minutes, and no one's even batted an eyelid at you, and you want to spend £15,000 with them. <laughs> and you're like, well, if you don't want my money, I'll go somewhere else. And uh, the sales guy, he was saying, actually, it's something they might continue with, is if you want to speak to someone about buying a bike, you make an appointment, because then you've got that person for that period of time and they're not going to be distracted because they've got their calendar booked for that particular person about that particular bike. And he was saying that although obviously everything is up in the air and crazy at the moment, that uh, he was actually getting um, a 90% turnaround on a deal being made through the appointments. Um, yeah. I, I'm one of the 10% apparently. <laughs> well, I mean... But that method, they uh, some car dealerships here in, in Nashville did that beforehand. Like Cadillac dealerships, you'd have to set up an appointment to test drive. This is long before the pandemic, and it's kind of like it's a if I can get you to say yes, then you're more likely to continue saying yes throughout the process. So if I can get you to say yes to set up the appointment, then it may be easier for me to get you to say yes for the sale, yep. as opposed to you just walked in off the street, you have no commitment at all. And, you know, so I could see why that would work to their advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting that the the whole world is going to be really changed after this. And um, I think people kind of think of this as a, you know, a temporary disruption of our lives. But I think it's, it's you know, a little more permanent for now. Yeah, I think if this is if this is our generation's disruption, we've done all right. <laughs> yeah if this is the worst of it i don't think we're there yet but I, mean, anyway, I, mean, uh, I do think it's going to be a lot worse but i i just mean that um i mean my dad was bought born during the blitz his mm -hmm. parents were in world war ii um and i mean in america you've you've had conflicts since then as well which are massive and uh, a big drain on your population uh well, we tend to go outside our area to do all that we don't, <laughs> we don't have it come here too much. We play well with others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't. <laughs> you know. um, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to readjust, reevaluate. Like um, the curvy road that I did, uh, you know, where I drug the board and all that, 
When I got to the end, I stopped at the gas station. I was refueling and I was behind another motorcycle near the end of the ride. And I didn't want to crowd them because I could tell this was more of a novice rider based on the way they were taking the curves. And so I maintained my distance and we ended up pulling to the same fuel station. They went inside and got something. I was just fueling up. And then they came out and talked to me. It was an older gentleman. And it was amazing. It's at first he was kind of like the normal, hey, I'm within three feet talking. And then he just slowly increased the distance a little bit. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you know, I don't know who you are or where you've been or, you know, we're both sweaty, so we don't know if we have fever. So yeah, but it, it, I think that's going to be the norm. You know, you just kind of have to maintain, you can't just run up and hug each other. There's no bro hugs and stuff. And right. Right. I thought about doing a spoof video of all the biker nuances. We're going to have to say goodbye to for the next few years, you know, like uh, sharing beers and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, I, wonder I don't know. What repercussions will happen from this social distancing that we're doing. Because in the past, uh, we would spread germs by doing our man hugs and sharing your beer and stuff like that. Um, so the whole population got the group herd, herd immunity type thing from all the minor little bugs and they just became a nothing. Whereas if we have this, this sort of social distancing to stop the COVID-19 spread, all the other things are going to build up and become super little germs trying to cross this two meter barrier thing. And they're going to have this arms race of, of being able to jump further. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That's good. We should do another spoof like that too. You know? <laughs> we should play a different germ and have an arms race of jump. <laughs> the comic world is now sort of like weaponized or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 We can start doing that. And you know that, that the good bug's a dead bug. <laughs> <laughs> be like a germ moving into a new body. Be like, hey man, nobody's in here for a while. All right. <laughs> Sounds like my sex life. <laughs> <laughs> have, have Have any of you been, uh, ever read or uh, recently read the uh, Stephen King, The Stand? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When this first started, I was like, oh, here we go. I. What was it? 95.9, uh, 95% communicable and fatal. Yeah. It's like, we're not quite there, but right. geez Louise, I could see how it would have happened. <laughs> I, I think when this first started happening, like in the first couple of weeks of, you know, sheltering in place, I think I had some gallows humor and I just started watching the stand. Oh goodness. And I, I couldn't finish it because I, at some point I'm like, this isn't funny anymore. <laughs> this is <isn't> true. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because, you know, like American me, uh, news tends to become uh, focused on on its own country, right? And so unless you purposefully go out and look at other places, you don't really get a full picture of what's going on. And so if you saw our news kind of, you know, take it when it hit here, start taking it as a hot topic. But yet Italy was I had already gone through the worst of it by that point. It's like, why do we think it's going to go any easier here than it did there? It, you know, it doesn't change. Right. It's not, it's not going to, what's the difference? You know, yeah, they're more dense population. So then I started, you know, watching like what's going on in LA and Chicago and New York, you know, the big dense populations to kind of, yep. It played out there just like it did in Italy, you know, cause they had a dense population. It's, I think it's, it's interesting to see how other countries also see us. So I, I was watching um, a motor blogger from Australia. And, and they were talking about how it's very mild, uh, or at least now very mild in Australia, like the number of cases per day has really dropped. Mm -hmm. But they're saying it's like, unlike, you know, what's happening in the United States where you get it, you're definitely gonna die. <laughs> and so I wrote in my comments, I'm like, well, it's not quite that fatal. I mean, we do have a lot of cases, but it's not like, and I should have put down like Stephen King's The Stand. Yeah. Uh, well, what is it, New Zealand? Uh, didn't they pretty much eradicate it for now? It sounds That's like it. They're saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah because two Kiwi yeah. writers, they you know, were posting how they were locked down for so long. And then they finally said, you know, they could like gather in groups. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Right. <laughs> but we didn't do that here in the States. We just kind of, I don't know. You know the We've got a, a small uh, sheep, though, in, in uh, uh, New Zealand, though, haven't they? What's that? They've got a lower population per sheep in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, I think there's two sheep for every person or something. I don't know. Has anyone checked the sheep then for the COVID-19? 
<laughs> yeah, I, I remember early on reading about some of the possible cross species contamination. You know, like was it the one couple dogs in China that come down with it? And then they turned out it was because people had pet them with the the, the virus, and so oh. they had it on them, and so it made them test positive, but they did not internalize it yet. It's right? Like, oh wow, that's and so think about if you were out shopping, you know. You go in and you're touching a can of beans. You know who else has touched that can of beans? Right, right. Yeah, I saw like the other day there was a woman and uh, I was in this sort of produce store and they had a deli section and they had like a little, um, you know, refrigerated case and they had pre-made sandwiches in there and she doesn't have the mask, you know, over her nose and she comes walking up to it and she opens up the thing and she's, oh, I don't want this. I don't. And she's touching all. Mm -hmm. of and I'm like, okay, now I think I'll throw it all about. <laughs> all mm -hmm. sandwiches. Um, yeah, it's, you know, and then the funny thing is that you see all the bad stuff. Um, but I think the majority of people do follow the guidelines. It's just that mm -hmm. when that one person you see, you kind of like are focused on them. And then you're thinking, oh, no, everyone's doing it. But no, it's, it's fortunately one person out of many. Yeah. But, you know, here we are. Yeah. We'll get through it. We'll get through it.